you've probably heard the term Lean Six Sigma. What I want to do today is to set up an understanding of what is the Lean Six Sigma way. The way is a way to improve the way an organization performs. And when we think about organizations, we establish organizations to achieve a purpose, to accomplish something. We don't establish organizations to fail. And so implicit in the very fact that we bring people together to accomplish a common goal, there's a need to improve and keep that organization getting better. The opposite of getting better is a form of natural degradation. This occurs with entropy. Everything gets worse over time. And so just to keep organizations even, we still have to have improvement. Now, to improve means that you understand where you are at the beginning. There's a starting point, some sort of baseline. If you think about it, everybody at some point in time gets on the scale to weigh themselves. We take a look at that weight and establish as a baseline. We compare it perhaps to our height and maybe our body mass. And we say, do we like this circumstance or not? If we don't like it, we have to go on a diet or perhaps exercise. If we do like it, we just continue as we were. All work and processes are basically the same. We have to have a baseline. We have to know what do we start. We have to have some knowledge about the starting point. If there is no standard or no baseline to understand, there can be no valid improvement. Can you imagine never weighing yourself and say, I'm going to go on a diet or I'm going to gain weight? How do we know we're succeeding? We just have chaos. And so we have to understand the current state. If we don't have an understanding of what that baseline or the standard of performance is, then we can't actually address the things that we have to do to improve. We don't understand the gap we need to close or the loss that needs to be avoided or the waste that needs to be eliminated or the inefficiency that needs to be decreased. Performance has to be compared to some level or some uh, magnitude of improvement we would like to have. It helps us to define targets for getting better and for improving. In Lean Six Sigma, we use the idea of process capability. And that's where we measure the performance of a process and how much it changes over time within boundary conditions established by the customer. You'll discover that that performance measure is called process capability. And when we take a look at how stable our process is compared to our performance as expected or communicated to our customers, through a service level agreement perhaps, or some sort of performance guarantee, what we see is we can actually then make a judgment. How close are we to satisfying those needs? How stable we do that over time? If there is room for improvement, then we say, well, we have two choices. Either we require resources to improve or we don't require resources to improve. And those choices actually help us to structure the type of project we would use for improvement. So if there is no more room for improvement, I have to have a new design. I have to have new resources to create a situation that's better than what I've invested in today. If, however, on the other hand, there is room for improvement without additional resources, I just have to find a way, how do we use the resources we have today more efficiently? So the basic question we have is, what kind of improvement opportunity exists? Now, in Lean Six Sigma, we see that this depends on the current circumstances, understanding the baseline. And there are several different approaches that could be used in a Lean Six Sigma improvement project. And the idea of continual improvement is going to depend on the objective. So we have two basic types of objectives. One is fix the current process, products, or service. We will do this with a methodology we'll call DMAIC. That stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control. Those are the five project management steps that we go through in the Six Sigma project, which could be done either at a green belt or a black belt level. And the idea is these types of steps will be followed sequentially, roughly. There's some feedback loops. But it's the job of the organization to create and standardize and maintain standard work. And so we will t try to understand how do we assure consistency of the outcomes in performance to the customers. How do we assure stability in the work process so that we can actually then have a predictable outcome? And how do we maintain costs within control? 
All of those are things we would like to do in the normal day-to-day -day work or the routine work of our daily management processes. That is requiring no additional resources than what we've already invested or budgeted into the system. If, however, we cannot make improvement without additional resources, then we have to design a new process, new products or new services. This is a different project management approach, but it goes by a similar name. It's called DMADV, or Define, Measure, Analyze, Design, and Verify. And here it's the job of organizations to develop a future state of work performance. So we're going to design a new way of working. So we want to create in that new way of working reliable performance, which is going to operate within a targeted environment, what we expect to see in terms of the operating conditions, and within limits that will allow us to achieve the consumer needs that we predict for the future. So as we look at these, we have two basic questions. In this design role, we want to ask ourselves, how do we create a new business or a new process or products? So design is something that creates a predictable outcome in a future state, but it's also useful to the consumer in terms of their desires, and it's desirable as a performance result to the organization. So in this area of design, which is the DMADV process, we see design costs should be bearable by the consumers. It has to be within their tolerance band for pricing or cost. It has to be sustainable for the society. We can't have the costs transferred to society that are not borne by the consumers. But it also has to be profitable for the organization so it can continue to operate. Now, the world of Design for Six Sigma, or DMADV, is not typically a world that green belts participate in, unless, of course, you're working in research and development. And that's a whole different story. But if you're working in operational processes, or support processes, or service processes, typically this world of design is about business process engineering, creating new software or hardware or organizational layouts for infrastructure. And those jobs tend to be done by a black belt level of competence. Somebody who's had a little more training than what we have in the green belt. The second question, though, we have is one that green belts do actually focus on in the daily management system. And this is a question, do we need to fix the current business processes or products? And these are tasks that can be done with minimal training. But of course, if they become more complex, then a black belt level of competence will be required. And here what we see is this is going to be structured problem solving following the five steps of project management, DMAIC. And we're going to compare in the beginning current performance versus the desired state or the accepted standard. If there is no accepted standard or no desired state, then the first job is to create it. Understand what is the foundation process? What is the basis by which we're performing? And if we've never done any structured improvement in our organization, we've never had formal measurement systems that measure the actual work done in the organization in terms of the cycle times of the work or the productivity of the work or the quality level that the work is performed to, and those are done objectively, then we probably have some measurement problems. The British uh, physicist Stephen Hawking said, the cost of bad data is the illusion of knowledge. We think we know something, but we're actually guessing because the numbers are not meaningful. So the very first step in this DMAIC process is to get real about measured performance. Now, many of you have heard the word lean or lean performance. And many of you have had people say, that doesn't require statistics. But that's totally wrong. Because we have to have a measurement, and we have to know how consistent is the process over time. The answer to that can only be answered with statistical method. It can't be based on groupthink or, oh, let's brainstorm the situation, or let's create an uh, affinity diagram, or let's use some, some tools that allow us to, to put our ideas together. We have to have objective evidence. And in an evidence-based system, we say these measures are good or bad, and then if they're bad, we correct them so that we actually make the right decisions. Otherwise, we're just guessing. So the gap between a properly measured capability to perform and the target where we'd like to be provides motivation for performance improvement.
and the structured step-by-step -step inquiry into process performance and the ability to improve identifies what must be done, where it must be done, and it identifies also how we should work to make the improvements happen. Now, for those of you who are going to continue in Greenbelt training, what you'll find is that this training is going to help you to understand how an individual work unit or work cell or group of people, team of people, can perform their work more effectively, efficiently, and stably. You'll be using this DMAIC process. You'll learn a set of tools that provide you statistical pointers to where the problems are, and then you'll find out the problems are either in the way the system was designed or in the way people are actually applying that system design. And we'll see both statistical tools and lean tools, tools about how human beings work, are used in combination, not separately, it's not a choice of either or, but it's a collective convergence of both methodologies that allows us to have the most practical applications for making improvements. That is the way of Lean Six Sigma. And I hope as you think about this process, perhaps as you study it in depth or go for the Green Belt certification, that you can understand we're not going to throw anything out. We're not going to choose between statistics or non-statistics. We're not going to choose just a humanistic approach. We have to use all of our tools in a systematic approach to understand how can we improve the way we work in our daily management systems. Thank you very much.